folks, and welcome to Retro Rewind, proudly brought to you by Maccas. This is the show where we're going to hop into a time tunnel, take you through the 70s, the 80s, a little bit of the 90s, and there is no better man to share quality time in a time tunnel with than Mr Stephen Roach, who's come in full costume. He's done the old Balmain Tigers jersey. Yeah, not only the Balmain Tigers jersey, the Bumblebee style. How yeah. good is it? Still got the same haircut from the 1970s, I might add. Well, is it fair to say the 70s were some of the best years of your life, Stephen? I used to love it. The 3 o'clock match of the day, one day, one game every weekend, the kick-off at 3 o'clock, play Junior League in the morning and get set for the big game. Did you have your first kiss? I don't know whether the Maccas would mind me going there. Your first kiss in the 70s? That, the only kiss I knew then was the Liverpool. Oh, nice. The Liverpool kiss, a lovely headbutt to start the program. That's how it was. Outstanding. Well, you can get in on the fun of the program here. <laughs> Proudly brought to you by Maccas. Head to the Fox League Facebook page and vote for your favourite retro moments. And that's a real challenge because we have some doozies for you on the program. And we're going to kick off in the 70s. Now, this is a walk down memory lane. We're going back to 1979. This is before State of Origin, when New South Wales played Queensland and Queenslanders played in the blue jersey. But not at big stadiums. We're going off to Leichhardt Oval midweek in front of a man and a dog. And the first try, Stephen, Get your head around this one. Rocket ready, trying to get a pass away. Still, he does. He's a freak at that. Craig Young got himself into the clear, looking for support. Unloads nicely to Mortimer. Running well. He got it to Dorohy. Dorohy weaving, running, gets it back to Cradden. Cradden's up the sideline. The pass inside to Cradden. Shut the gate. The horse has bolted. Shut the gate. Larry Corowa finishing off a move that had what? Rod Reddy, Albert Young. Turvey Mortimer, Joe Cool, John Dorohy, The Crow, Mick Cronin, uh, Larry Coral were at the finish. What a try. Oh, Mick Cronin, see, waddling there. And the pass back on the inside, <laughs> the Larry John Coral. What a place for him to score at the eighth wonder of the world at Leichhardt Oval. But it all started with big Craig Young. That's when the halfbacks used to run off front rowers. A little bit of ball playing there from the big fella. But and it, what a try it was. But it blows people away that, you know, this is not state of origin, but this is the state series. Yet we played at Leichhardt Oval. I mean, I went to some of these games. There might have been 2,000 people there, max. Yeah, and then, and then, as you said, the next year the, the big guys started with the yeah. state of origin and all those guys could play for Queensland. So it was good to see the likes of Rod Reddy playing for New South Wales. That try is a super try in any era and the field's a bit muddy, which is a nice touch as well. But it's finished off by Larry Corowa. Now, oh. I must admit, I had a Larry Corowa poster on my wall as a kid. He oh. was an absolute hero of mine. I was lucky enough to play with Larry Corowa. He was the only bloke along with the pearl... Ellery Hanley, that the hill used to stand for. As soon as he got the football, and it was it was great that he was playing at Leichhardt Oval that day and scored that try. A great way to start. What a moment. 1979, a fabulous team try from New South Wales against Queensland. Now on Retro Rewind, proudly brought to you by Maccas. I'm going to go back to a day, Stephen, when there were no warm-ups pre-game. The players did not come out onto the field. The first time you saw them was when they came out of the tunnel. Andrew, the only thing when I was playing that I stretched was my imagination. Not pre-game. Not even a star but jump. Star jump? <laughs> Jog on the spot, hit the knees, uh, da- hit the hands. Is Dankle Rub still going? Is that still going? Dankle, Dankle rub. rub. So you had a little rub. A little but, rub, but yes. But yes. stre- you didn't yeah. stretch anything. And straight out the play. Well, back in the day, 1979, we've got some wonderful vision of grand final day where the players would be introduced one by one, making it extra special. The George team about to be introduced, and here's Brian Johnson, the fullback. Next man is uh, Mitch Brennan. Number two has gone out, and uh, here now is Graham Quinn. Now it's uh, Robert Finch. Probably was a little more exciting if you were there, but, but I'm saying... And if you're the last man out, you're sitting there sort of looking at your watch saying, when am I going to get a run out? But one by one, John Brennan, the ground announcer on Grand Final Day, would often be there with a little blurb on each player. I mean, imagine the butterflies. Imagine the adrenaline pumping, waiting to come on. Well, the other, th- the other great thing they used to do on that day, back in the day at the Sydney Cricket Ground, was take a team photo next to the members' stand. That was another big thing for the players. Did you ever have to sit with your legs crossed out the front? Uh, no, we first played... We didn't play at the Cricket Ground. We only played a couple of uh, test mm. matches at the Cricket Ground. But of course. Yeah, but then, then the Sydney Football Stadium... But happened. that run on there that we see, this is the St George Dragons getting ready to play the Canterbury-Bankstown Bulldogs. Andrew, I mean... 
they're, what, they're stretching up. Andrew, they? what happens if you went off a little bit early and your name wasn't called and you ran on the field? What happened then? Did you have to reverse? Mm, or? Yeah, of course, yeah. That could be a problem. I wasn't expecting that question, Stephen. I don't have an answer. So there you go. A great moment. Pre-match introductions, the players onto the field individually. How good is that? On Retro Rewind, brought to you by Maccas. Well, I can remember it as a kid. You were king for a day if you went to school on a Monday with a piece of corner post. Even just a piece of corner post. They were the days. And if you got the heads up, you could sit inside the fence at some of the grounds. How special was that? And the kids were allowed on the ground That's what I'm after saying. the game. Yes. I was too slow to get the corner post, so I used to ask for the tie-ups. Or can I have your socks? <laughs> Well, I just say, I got the corner post from time to time and it may have unfurled, but that all came about from being able to sit inside the fence. I remember sitting inside the fence at North City Oval. We have some vision here to jog the memory for you. This is what it was like at Lidcombe Oval back in the day. Peter Wynn. Glover. Glover. Caught by the toe, literally by the toe, is it? Brandon. Backing up on the inside. Well, only eight metres away, shall we say. Pretty close. Dorothy. Rodonicus, Ray Brown, nice pass, oh yeah, nicely. And that's a little bit of Brown magic, that one. Held it up just nicely. No health and safety issues there. I mean, yeah, if a player went streaming through and fell into the crowd, that was part of the attraction. Well, you've got to learn to get out of the way, haven't you, Andrew? That's, that's it. There's no security <laughs> guards facing the crowd. Everyone is reasonably well behaved. The kids in particular, though, getting to be that close to their stars. I mean, I can remember these days. Yeah. You know, that... That makes you love the game. Yeah, I mean, and, and even just to run onto the field after the game and, yeah. and pat one of your heroes on the back, that was a big thing. Mob them. Yes. Mob them. Cuddle them. <laughs> Give them a cuddle. Yes. So, kids on the field inside the fence. Now, we can never go back to those glory days. You do know that, Stephen. Why? Well, we can't. We can't. There's safety issues, there's security guards. I well, mean... can't the kids go on the field? <laughs> That's it. You're going to start a campaign. I want to start a campaign for kids to be allowed to go well, on the Well, Maccas get behind that. Retro yes. Rewind becomes the current day. Every kid that gets on the ground gets a bucket of fries or something like that. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Wonderful promotion, Stephen. <laughs> we are in the time tunnel today. That is a retro moment proudly brought to you by Maccas. Kids inside the fence. Yay. Staying in the 70s right now and we go to the days of the old midweek cup at Leichhardt Oval. I mean, I'm thinking uh, four-quarter football, knockout competition, the first time we saw black paint under the eyes, striped football's blocker. I'm thinking Western Division, we're even <laughs> yes. in it. TV Ted Ellery, do you remember him? Anyone could win. It yeah, was open was to it? all comers, FA Cup style. Mate, it was unreal. And it was a big thing to win the Amco Cup midweek. That's then it right. turned into the Panasonic Cup. Well, Leichhardt was the host. It was, it was rugby league under lights. And we, it was... For a lot of people, the Midweek Cup was the first time they went to a game under lights. And it was also Keith Barnes saying, I'd like to see him utilise the chip over the top <laughs> a little right. bit more. Well, talking <laughs> about utilising the chip over the top, this is a fabulous moment. The 1977 Midweek Cup final and Russell Fairfax, he had the whole oh. package, scores a wonderful try. Fulton, Harris... <laughs> And Harris takes it 10 metres into West Territory now. <laughs> the clock showing three minutes to go. It's with Beetson. And Fairfax! Fairfax chips over the head. He'll score. Yes! Fairfax has scored and that it was a try. But now he has to convert his own try. Now, that is beautiful. I don't know what the first prize was for winning the Midweek Cup. It might have been $2,500 or something, but that, that is a wonderful try. Russell Fairfax had everything. He had the long hair. He was a sex symbol. Like, he wasn't even allowed in the Eastern Suburbs Roosters Leagues Club because his hair was too long. Well, what an unbelievable play. He was the first, as you said, the sex symbol, but who was the bloke that got in the ball? My hero of all time, the great Arthur Beetson. Well, that, that, that's in the day. Eastern Suburbs Roosters versus the Western Suburbs Magpies. Magpies. Yeah. And uh, Russell Fairfax, with a, with a rugby union background, I mean, he could do it all. I mean, he just had flair, he had skill. I mean, that is a truly great retro moment. You know what was bad about it, but Ian Schubert tried to look like him. Uh, tried to look like yeah. a twin. Yeah. Russell got all the attention. Well, that's right, but that's a true story. He was, he was not allowed to get into the, the, his that's own right. leagues club. Both of them. Because the hair was too long. <laughs> <laughs> what, what a day. Short back and slide. Has, it, has it mankind come a long way? Do you know what I reckon it was? Yeah. The college, college cut. Did you ever have one of them? The college cut? The well, college the, cut. The, bus, <laughs> the flat top. <laughs> I don't know where this is headed. Anyway, Russell Fairfax, 1977 midweek cup final try. It is a pearler. 
All right, then, let's recap our retro moments. Brought to you by Maccas up to now from the 70s. How do you put these against each other? The team try, New South Wales, Queensland, 1979. Player introductions, grand final day, SCG. Kid City in, inside the fence against Russell Fairfax, chip and chase try blocker. Andrew, you've made it so hard. I love Larry John Corr at Leichhardt, but I've yes. got to go for the glamour boy, the sex symbol. Russell Fairfax, the chip over the top, how good. Is there a bit of a bromance with this? Is it because of what you had a bit of something for, Russell? Well, I like him. He's a good kid. I I'm <laughs> thinking what I like about there is kids inside the fence because I'm getting flashbacks. That you was are. me and that was as good as it got. Have you still got the corner post? Uh, I might. <laughs> it would have surprised you if I said <laughs> You're very quirky. Bit of a hoarder. <laughs> You're very quirky. <laughs> That's it. On Retro Rewind, brought to you by Maccas, it is time to take you into the 1980s, where this man, Stephen Roach, played his first game in first grade, so the 80s are just a magic memory for you. Now you're talking sugar lips. <laughs> now you're talking about the real, don't call, the don't, real don't 80s. Never call me sugar lips. <laughs> <laughs> but the 1980s, there was fashion, players still had jobs and work, but kangaroo tours, there were lots of elements to it. But still, only two matches were on TV on a weekend and you had the midweek cup and that was it. It was unbelievable. As I said, you used to sit on the edge of your seat just to watch, you know, the, the Saturday afternoon games. It was so exciting, but uh, the 80s was certainly a good time to be playing footy. Well, we're going to start off with 1980. Now, this is a very famous day in rugby league and it's got nothing to do with a try scored or a tackle made. <laughs> it's, in fact, a pitch invader that uh, gets right up in the face of the infamous referee, Greg Hartley. Said. Greg Hartley's not impressed. Some of the players have got him on the arm and dragging Gerard has got it. He's dragging it to the sideline. We've got two policemen. I thought one was with guns drawn, but he's got his hand on his pistol. Now the girl has lifted back over the uh, fence and I suggest she might have an interesting afternoon dodging bobbies. What, what a great start point to revisit the 80s. Where's security? What about the policeman? Yeah. Doggy out there. I mean... But what's wrong with Greg Hartley? She was yeah. only asking for his phone number. Well, well, what's look, going on? I'm saying Greg played it beautifully. I mean, hands behind the back, very official, refused to have eye contact. Jeff Gerard shows the chivalry thought that he tries to escort her off the ground. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. How can we highlight a pitch invader as one of the great moments? That's a great moment. Well, I can't, I can't believe only one person ran onto the field. I would <laughs> expect if someone goes on, yes. then we all go on. It was yes. on the hill at Leichhardt too. What a moment. Now, staying in the 1980s, folks, the rugby league fields back then, not like the bowling greens that the players play on now and the drainage is absolutely perfect. Back in the middle of winter in the 80s, the fields would turn to dirt from goal line to goal line. And you get a little bit of rain, that dirt became mud. You'd play on mud heaps. Do you miss them? I do miss it because I could never catch the halfbacks unless it was muddy. But I give their face a little bit of facial... <laughs> facial give a little... Yeah, like, you know, they do that for the skin. all the beauty stuff. Good for the skin. <laughs> So let's go to a muddy moment from the 1980s at the SCG. And the referee, curiously, is Mr McCullum, who's uh, three on the trot for this uh, Monday night football. The first ball mishandled by Andrews, goes backwards. Coleman. Roberts. Tackled straight away by Scott Trump. And there's the hooter. I think Schubert said something of a something to him there. Well, the referee showing a little bit of common sense of moving them from the scrap out of the mud patch. Well, that's just like mud wrestling. At the finish, you saw Mario Fennick. By the end, you can't tell the South Sydney Rabbitohs from the Western Suburbs Bagpies. You know, the, I don't know if the sin bin was in then, but you'd get set to the sin bin early so you'd get the warm shower. Yes. Andrew. Very so, smart. So, and two, once you had the mud of the eyes and your face planted oh. in the middle and they, they give you the lovely facial massage, what, you just get the magic sponge across the eyes and then you could see again? But that is a wonderful retro moment. You're never going to see the likes of it again. Mud from basically 10 metre line to 10 metre line and, and that was the SCG. Like, that was the number one rugby league ground that you saw there. What a retro moment. In the 80s, not just uh, Canterbury fans are going to love this, but they had the tag, the entertainers. I think all rugby league fans bought into what the Bulldogs did back in the 80s. Yeah, weren't they an exciting side, the way they threw the ball around? And then, of course, they become the dogs of war. Yeah, but they in had... The late 80s. But early 80s, you know, they have three Hughes brothers, yeah. three Mortimer brothers, like six brothers and they could in all play. the team. Yeah, just amazing. Now, this is a try. 
Sit back and enjoy this from 1980, one of the great team tries, finished off by Stan Cutler for the Bulldogs. Ray Brown, to me, looks a little bit lost in the lock forward job. Not blaming him for the all the defensive errors, but there are a number of occasions where gaps are created like that. Beautiful football again with Mark Hughes involved. The Chris Mortimer back to Mark Hughes there. They're toying with Manley. Look at Anderson coming up the sideline. He comes back in field, sprinting for the line. It's back inside the cutter. Oh, it's a gem of a try. They've done it again. Huron, five metres inside the quarter, into the breeze. Doesn't make any difference. Oh, it swung sharply, but late. It's another two pointer. Almost too many great names to mention, but the try for Cutler, the last man to pass it is Chris Anderson. Yeah, Back Chris. Anna, see, the great thing about those days was everyone had wonderful skill, didn't they? You just see everyone just getting on the ball there and just supporting the, the bloke with the football. And as you said, Chris Anderson cuts back in field and it's a beautiful pass to Cutler and it's all over. What a try. See, a try like that, we could do this program. It won't be us. It'll be our great-great-grandchildren. In 100 years' time, you could roll that in and still sit there and go, wow, yeah, how, how good, good was that? And then the toe poker to finish it off. Oh, toe poker. Steve Gear and just, uh, just wide of the post. Um, and that played at Brookvale Oval, Canterbury against Manly. Again, it is that was a Sunday afternoon game where there were great, the games happening all around, flash scores around the grounds, but the match of the day, you score a try like that, that is really something special. One of the headline acts in the 1980s was, of course, the Parramatta Reels, our premiers, 81, 82, 83, 1986. Let us go to a 1983 moment from the final series. A man you played a lot of football with, the what? guru Eric Groth. Oh, one of the greatest wingers of all time. If he was in a mood, yeah. Eric Groth would score. He had the bump, the oh. bump. He dropped the hip. And the speed and the strength, unbelievable. This is a guru moment to savour. Slipping off some tackles, and uh, those early setbacks of also losing a player seems to have disorganised them somewhat. Steve Eller, a man that Parramatta needs back in form. Here's Eric Gross through two, through three. Look at Gross through four. He's beaten five. Oh, what a try! That is one of the biggest tries you'll ever see. The blue and gold army go nuts, and is there any reason why they wouldn't? So what does he beat? One, two, three, four, five, and takes a sixth over the line. And Stevie Mortimer in the shot there, right at the end there, <laughs> just trying to make the cover tackle. But as I said, Eric Groth, what an unbelievable player. It used to be fashionable for big front rowers that they'd have winger in and you could smash them until Eric Grove came along. Well, isn't it amazing? You see a player play like that, so strong, so intense, and yet you speak to his teammates. He used to fall asleep in the dressing room. He used to walk <laughs> out with Brett Kenny. Did you ever see the way that they used to walk on the field? Oh, they, they were funny blokes. So, Eric Grove, a super try, and that try is remembered by so many. Like, it's one of those where-were-you-when moments. Yeah. And if you believe it, there was a crowd there on that day of 224,000 people. And you're talking about a super back line. Oh, what, has there ever been a better back line than that? Yeah, wow. Well, Parramatta, an absolutely sensational try. The guru from 1983. Retro rewind moments proudly brought to you by Maccas. I must say, in the 80s, uh, grounds didn't have sponsors' names. So... North Sydney Oval was North Sydney Oval. Lidcombe Oval was Lidcombe Oval. Lycard Oval was Lycard Oval. Oval. Yes. Penrith Park was Penrith Park. That's right. Penrith Park. And Penrith wore, often wore the brown and white. They were the chocolate soldiers. The soldiers, weren't they? Yes. Greg Beautiful Alexander. brown, weren't they? Oh, they were. They were. Greg Alexander, uh, your memories of Brandy as a player? Oh, wait. In those in the 80s, everyone had a halfback, but th there wasn't that many better than, than Greg Alexander off the mark. He was a superstar uh, I seen one day the 100 best tries that he scored. Someone showed me and uh, he was a great player. This is a moment from 1989. You want to see Razzle Dazzle? We'll get it by the bucket load with this. Gaia. Way right comes for Bentley. Down they go towards the quarter. He slips. Back to his feet now. Alexander. Playing with this Canterbury side, he taunts them as he darts across field. Back it comes for Bradley. McIndoe sights the gap. He flicks it anywhere. Out the back it comes for Goya. He throws it over his head. What a try! It's the Harlem Globetrotters. Seriously, MG throwing that last pass over the head. I mean... We, oh, how'd they do it? How'd know, they do it? You know the most amazing thing about that is mm. they're brother-in-laws and I, I reckon they played in the backyard a lot. When you see Mark Guy throw this pass, the last pass to Greg Alexander, 
He knows he's there. Oh, please. please. I reckon that's, he knows he's there. That's a long bow. No, I they reckon he's brother law until they're married and you're saying they're playing backyard footy. I reckon <laughs> he knows from. he's there. Look at that. <laughs> he knows straight away Brandy's there. What a try. I'll tell you what's amazing, though, and you know it from your day. They are throwing around a leather football and you see from there it's a little wet. That becomes a heavy cake of soap. Oh, 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 they were. It used to be about three or four kilos, those balls, but the <laughs> handling was outstanding and... Mate, that was a great try. We're proud to call him a Fox League colleague. An amazing try scored there by Greg Alexander. The year was 1989. The 1980s brought new teams to the competition. 1982, you had the Canberra Raiders and the Illawarra Steelers. But come 1988, the big one, the birth of the Brisbane Broncos. We go outside of New South Wales and the ACT to bring in a new team and a team with some superstars. And it was the first time I ever heard the term... Franchise. The yeah. Broncos were a franchise, but, gee, they had some great players and finally go on the big stage and get to prove themselves. Well, the moment that we've picked out is one that features the man we know as the King Wally Lewis. Now, it's not quite the Benji Marshall flick pass of the 05 Grand Final, but it's still pretty nifty. A different interpretation of the rules that Broncos are going to have to get used to. Out for Lewis. Oh, oh beautiful <laughs> pass. That was deserving of a oh, oh, look at this. Here it comes. Tully Curry. Oh! on the cake at Lang Park and put it down to Wally Lewis. What a beautiful play. I said the little grubber was on. Who would have thought the flick pass? Rubbing it in. Look at this. From behind the back. Straight to Mark Hone. Hone goes very close. Fires it back. Madison on it quickly. Kept the ball alive. Fantastic skills. Look at this. The pass from Langer. Joey Kilroy mesmerises poor old Dale Shearer down. Joey had a look at him and said, I'm going. And Shearer just said, well, go whatever way you like. I'm going to make this statement. I don't think there's been a more nonchalant flick pass thrown in the history of the game than what the King did there. He had this unbelievable ability to do things that people didn't expect. That's why he was called the King. He was a great player. And uh, the Brisbane Broncos finally on the big stage mm. playing against Manly, who were the Premiers the year before. Yeah, and this is yeah a carve-up of the Manly Ring of Seagulls. There again, as I said, it's not really Benji Marshall 05 full speed, but it's just that little out the back. But I reckon if you if you put him to the test in his playing days and you ask him to do that Benji Marshall flick, Wally Lewis could do a it. Great passer of the ball. The King features here with a great retro moment. A recap then of our great moments from the 1980s. Take your pick. Great players... Great moments at some great grounds. Andrew, you're making it hard on me, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to go for the entertainers, the Bulldogs. I love watching them play. They scored some great tries all during the 80s. Stan Cutler's try ahead of great Brandy try. Alexander scoring off the mark. Guy oh, up over the head. I just think there was more ball movement in the, in the Canterbury stuff, so I'm going to go... The, I love the way they played the Bulldogs. This may well be the toughest challenge you've ever had, but you get a chance to vote for your favourite retro moment. Head to the Fox League Facebook page. Proudly brought to you by Maccas. Vote for your favourite retro moment. Retro Rewind is the show proudly brought to you by Maccas. We're in the time tunnel today. You can vote for your favourite retro moments. We've gone through the 70s, the 80s. We're about to go into the 90s. You can go to the Fox League Facebook page, vote for your favourite retro moment, thanks to Maccas, and it is such a tough assignment. Let's go into the 1990s. And I'm thinking this is where there's a little more glitz and glamour in the game. Tina Turner gets on the scene. Suddenly people have mobile phones... All sorts of different things. Some boys have got a lips that just can't stop kissing. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. I don't, I don't think we needed that. Don't um, remember. Yeah, Tina. Yeah, but I don't want to hear you sing, and nor does the audience. Uh, um, <laughs> let me just start off with this. I want you to zip the lips, because the first moment is from a famous day at Brookvale Oval. It is the Balmain Tigers against the Manly Warringah Sea Eagles, and it may have involved this bloke. Of this game is Gary Jack Charles on the football to Neil to Robinson. Penalty, penalty to Manley. Yeah, shepherding there, uh, considered by the referee. The touch judge has come on. Oh, 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 oh. Roach is resisting the uh, referee, but Ward said to him, Come here now. Stephen, Stephen, Stephen Blocker Roach. Eddie Ward is the referee. I think you may have mouthed the word wombat Andrew, to the touch judge. You make one mistake in your life and look Did what you? happens. Yes. 
And yet how many times have you been asked about that in your life? Would it, have you hit the million mark? Yet? I think it'd be pretty close to yes. it, Andrew. I've run out of fingers and toes anyway. Look at this, up you come. I mean, Matt, you always Harry high pants in yes. that shot too. Yeah, all the days, the, yes. uh, the little boy shorts. How good was it, the Eddie Tigers? Ward. Did you have a chat since with Eddie? Obviously you have over the years. Oh, no, Eddie, Eddie, yeah, no. good as Mate, gold. I'll tell you what, he saved me that day. Uh, if he'd have said I was uh, bordering on lud mm. like a lunatic, yes. I'd have been... Still suspended, I'd reckon. So that cost you a little bit of coin as well. There was a fine in that and a suspension. Yeah, and Keith Barnes said, you'll be paying the fine too, Blucker. <laughs> <laughs> so that, we're calling that a great retro rewind. We are looking with rose-coloured glasses at the good old days. Blocker and the pat on the head at Brookvale Oval. Well, in the 1990s, there was only a referee and touch judges, certainly in the early 1990s, to judge what went on during a game. And dare I say, the players could... How do I say it? Could they hoodwink the officials? You call it hoodwink. I say it was a little bit of Hollywood. A little bit of Hollywood. A little bit of Hollywood act. Well, this is going to be a moment that is very hard to top. Now, it includes a Western Suburbs magpie, a front rower, Pat O'Doherty. Pat, how did you get away with this on one of the game's best from the 1990s, Gene Miles? Hoff managed to get to him. Taylor, that was forward. Well, he's going to allow it. I was sure that ball to O'Doherty. swap a couple of short punches. We've just seen a bloke take the greatest dive, in my view. I may be doing him an injustice. I reckon it was a dive. Let's see it again. O'Doherty's over. And there he goes. Blimey, Charlie, mate, you want to get into actors' equity. That's a joke. Oh, this is going to be hard to top. I hope Pat O'Doherty's out there watching this. Man, <laughs> that... Was, was country practice big in the 90s because he could have been a superstar of that show? Now, Pat O'Doherty, yeah. after that effort, I like yes. Patty. He was yeah, a good yeah, player, yeah, but yeah. he should have been thrown out of the front <laughs> rowers union for that. That's <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> Look at him. They're calling for the ambulance. He should have got five weeks for laying down. But Gene Miles goes to the sin bin. He gets, he gets sin bin by the referee for that. What, five or ten? Well, there's no replay. There's no big screen at the game. <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> All the referee sees is a bloke who's about to be given the last rights. <laughs> so someone must have done something wrong. Oh, dear. How many weeks did he get for that? I, well, I don't think there were any weeks involved. Yeah. I think once Ten they did watch the, uh, the, the, v, the VCR at the judiciary, he was let off. <laughs> Beto Doherty, though, wow. That's, that's going to be a very hard retro moment. To and it's going to be very hard for him to escape that if people watch it. Beto Doherty, we salute you. A great retro rewind moment brought to you by backers. Now, I think of the 1990s, I'm also thinking fashion. Stephen, is it like on rugby league field? There were shoulder pads, of course, some massive shoulder pads. But would you still have any clothing from the 1990s in your wardrobe? If we uh, probably, if yes. it still fits, Andrew, with those yes. big jackets. If it fits, that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, one of the fashions in rugby league from the 1990s was torpedoes underneath the shorts. Dragons were specials at this. New trends started here by St George today. They're all wearing the new torpedo lycras and, of course, you'll notice the padding which protects the, uh, the thigh muscle against corking. Now, I think it goes without saying you're not a doctor, Steve. Yes. <laughs> not that I'm aware of. Yes. But what would be the uh, medical advantage of the torps? Is it to uh, help anything muscular? Is it to stop you getting grazed? What was the thinking behind that, you Well, reckon? you would have heard the commentator then, Ray Warren, talking about corkies. Which was yes. a bruise to the leg. If you got a bad knock on the thigh, yes. you'd get corkies. But if I was playing back in those <laughs> days and they asked me to wear them, I would say, how embarrassing, I'm not wearing so them. So you're telling me that the theory was that a slither of padding yes. could stop you from getting a cork? Well, you also used to have side pockets too and you could put your hanky in there. You remember that? Your hanky? Yeah. Wow, that is a retro moment that is right up there or right down there, depending on which way you look at it. Well, we can't talk about the 1990s either without talking about rule changes. And uh, in the 1990s was the first time we saw the video referee come into the game. Now, we've got a moment coming up, the Gold Coast charges against the Parramatta Eels. But can you remember, by that time, you may have been in the media the first time... It, it, things didn't work seamlessly, did they? Uh, no, I think it was a little bit too many buttons, Andrew. <laughs> you either got a red one or a green one. Red, green. Yes. Red for no try? Red, no, no try. try. Green, green, the yes green light. Try. I could see try. how that could be very confusing. Mm. Um, let's buy into that confusion right now. As I say, Gold Coast charges against Parramatta. This is a fine retro moment. Well, there doesn't look to be too much wrong there. A little bit out of shot, that was the only problem. 
course, the kick going way back across the ruck, probably even further than he expected to originally. But he got Mate, up I think he was onside, to be honest with you. It was the, uh, the referee's adjudicator. Oh, shit. Oh, oh hello. 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 It's an each way bet. <laughs> it is a try. We're told it is a try. A whole lot of flashing. <laughs> It's a discontent here at the Gold Coast. Mm. Houston, we have a problem. So we go from no try to no try and yes try, like a Christmas tree, and then we go to try. If the game wasn't yes. complicated enough, yes. that'll do me. Yes. So in 100 years' time, when they go back to look at that moment, it's like aliens take over the planet. <laughs> I wonder what they'll think of that. I don't know. They should have took a coin out there and went like that. Yeah, that, that's coin. great. I mean, you know... I would love to have an old board like that. Try, no try. You said what could go wrong? It's green or it's red. Yeah. Red or it's green. No try red. No, no try red, wasn't it? No try red. And try green. But what happened there was... Ooh, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Got oh, mixed up. <laughs> oh, boy. Retro moments. We are in the time tunnel. We're having fun. Will you vote on that as one of the great moments? One of the great rivalries too now from the 1990s was uh, Canberra the Raiders and the Brisbane Broncos. And you were talking about two pretty slick attacking sides as well at their best. Well, they love taking each other on. A lot of the players that were originally Brisbane players in the in the second division league would come down and play for the Canberra Raiders before they were in the league. They never got to play in a grand final, though. And, and maybe that's a regret you're looking back on. It would have been great if the Raiders had to play the Broncos at their very best. Yeah, they, they were a great side in the in the 90s, the Canberra Raiders. They, they were probably the side of the 90s. Well, this is a famous moment from a night down in Canberra, a Friday night, freezing cold, and Brett Mullins runs red hot. Kick and chase by Mullins. Kick and chase again by Mullins. This will be a miracle. Oh, it is a miracle. Oh, and the iconic commentary of Ray Warren there. I mean, this will be a miracle. It is a miracle. Uh, Brett Mullins, he was that player who had that touch of magic. And, you know, he was in red-hot form that season too. He was a great player and, you know, he could do special things and uh, that was one of them. And that's a retro moment that the commentary goes hand-in-hand hand with it because I think when people think back to that try, they do hear Rab's voice in their head. Yeah. Because that's, that's, that's part of the moment. Yeah, he was iconic, wasn't he? So, uh, yeah, great, great footy from the Canberra Raiders in the 90s. Super 1990s moment, Brett Mullins, what a try. Retro Rewind in the 1990s gives us an opportunity to go to the first post-try celebrations. You think about back in the day, blokes would score a try, pick up the ball, walk back. Not so when we got to see entertainers in the 1990s like Nathan Blacklock at the and, Dragons. And how good were they? It was, uh, you know, people first saw it and thought, oh, these guys are a bit of a lair. Yeah. Then we all fell into it. It was sensational. See, uh, Anthony Mundine was great, but Nathan Blacklock is one of the great try scorers of our time. Mm. And this is a Sunday afternoon down in Wollongong where the St George Illawarra Dragons put the South Sydney Rabbitohs to the sword. <laughs> First division today. I'll come back to that. Ainsco. Ainsco! Pins away! Gets acceleration from it. Then it's with Rodwell. Now it's away for Tracy. Wing pursues. Ainsco's there. Jamie gives it to Blacklock. Blacklock is in. That is, that is one of the rugby league tries. That might be the best of 99. 11 out of 10 the try and the, and the celebration to this man, Nathan Blacklock. Well, I, well, the Russian judge is giving him 13. Um, so that's a wonderful effort. Andrew, I'm still dizzy. I would have been happy just to do a forward roll. <laughs> how good was that? I mean, how good was that? <laughs> With uh, the pop gun, uh, popcorn music <laughs> playing in the background. That, that Nathan Blacklock, you know, you talk about your entertainers and he went three seasons in a row scoring over 20 tries. I mean, yeah. it's extraordinary stuff. But the skills in that try, yeah. I mean, that's... That's the, the benefit of Sunday afternoon football, isn't it? Dry track and you can play like that. Yeah, I love I loved the Ainsco, how he backed up and, and caught the ball just, uh, just in one hand and sets the try up and then the celebration, sensational. And every time you talk about Nathan Blacklock, one of the great try scorers and entertainers of our time, you're talking about a little country town called Tinga. Tinga. Where he hailed from and many great players came from that same little town. But Nathan Blacklock, he was definitely the best. Uh, how good has it been to be in the uh, time tunnel today through the 70s, the 80s and the 90s? How are you going to split the 90s moments? From your head, Pat, 
to Pat O'Doherty taking a dive, finishing with Nathan Blacklock scoring a try like that. I think Nathan Blacklock, I love the 90s. That's when uh, the footy became real. Nathan Blacklock's... I reckon a few people might vote for you, though. I mean, we're talking about oh, iconic moments and things you remember. There's a field. That is a hot field of retro moments that you can vote for. And this is your opportunity. We said at the top of, uh, top of the program how hard it would be, but you go to the Facebook page, uh, face, Fox League Facebook page, and you vote for your favourite retro moment brought to you by McDonald's, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. It's been a bit of fun, hasn't it? I loved it. Andrew, can we trot off to McDonald's now and get some fries or something? Well, well I know you played for the Bowman Tigers, but I, I'm not sure why I'm actually dressed like this. I mean, the chest hair is real, folks, but oh. the rest of it is... <laughs> Someone get me a lawnmower, a whippersnipper. I, I didn't notice. <laughs> what, was this a bad shirt day or something? Stephen, thank you for spending this quality time in the Time Tunnel. Okay. Folks, that is Retro Rewind, brought to you by McDonald's. We'll see you next time. <laughs>